Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of We the Revolution. So it is day 7 and we are alone with our mentor. The people shrugged the invisible burden of their bags, the streets seemed more peaceful, even the windows at the courthouse were soon replaced. That was a short conversation. Ooh. Dear Citizen Fidel, I am writing to congratulate you on becoming a part of our country's history. Citizen Capay's trial is on everyone's lips. I would also like to discuss the important topic of appointing the new Commander-in-Chief of the National Guard, who will replace Citizen Burrell. It is my honest belief that I am the best candidate. Should you give me your permission, I would like to pay you a visit this evening. Long live the Republic, François Henriot. So now we're going to be involved in politics as well, because some guy wants to be the new commander-in-chief. Oh well, then let's, let's hear him out in the evening. So who's she? On the Corf, 67, is a widow who currently owns an enormous fortune that she inherited from her late husband, Baron de Clichy. Before the revolution, she was one of Marie Antoinette's trusted courtiers. After the events in 1789, she cut ties with the court. However, she recently became a frequent guest at the Tuileries, where the capes were being kept. She also took part in Count de Fersen's scheme to facilitate the escape of the monarchs from the Tuileries. Following the, the, the Fersen's orders, the Corf supposedly bought a new carriage in her own name. The purchase of a Berlin carriage for of a Berlin carriage for six passengers, sufficient to carry the capes from Paris, was made at Jean Louis's workshop. The valet of the Baroness Gilbert testified that the carriage was delivered to the Count shortly before the escape. Oh, so she helped with their plan. It is widely known that the Fersen himself, dressed as a coachman, drove the carriage as far as Bondi. Inter interestingly enough, when the monarchs were stopped in Varennes, Marie Antoinette had a newly issued passport under the name of Anne de Corf, which, was which she was using during the trip. The streets of Paris are shamming with gossip. They say that Anne helped the Count not because of her sympathy towards the monarchs, but because of an affair they had in the past and the elderly aristocrats' unquenchable desire. Evidence are received produced by Jean-Louis. So she was charmed in helping the aristocrats in helping in helping the capes leave because she was she had an affair with this Count de Fersen. So that's why she helped. Or that's why they believe she helped, because she cut the ties with the royals some time ago, some years ago. What's this? Dear Baroness, the custom Berlin carriage you ordered is ready. Your instructions have been attentively followed to the letter. Please pay the outstanding 70,000 francs through Durand in faith, JL. Ooh, it's gonna be interesting. The offender's personality is probably the widow. A receipt for the construction of a carriage is probably evidence. The trusted courtier, courtier is probably the personality as well. So the defendant's needs and urges is maybe the method. No. Oh wow, you're only can only make one mistake. Ah, <sighs> so oh great. There's so much to reveal still. So new passport for the queen. This is it's not evidence that we have. So I guess the new carriage was a method. Okay. It's not evidence that she was a frequent guest in the Tuileries. It's not an evidence that lies before us. So I guess this should be the method. Yes. The defendant's needs and urges is probably then... It's, it's not an evidence. So I guess it's the personality. Okay. Um, so, was the new passport for the queen the method or the evidence? Okay, so I'm just gonna go with... The evidence is not lying before us, so I'm gonna go with the method. Yes! Yes! Okay. Now... 
supporter of tyranny. Please introduce yourself. Baroness Andekov. Andekov, you have been accused of conspiring to facilitate the escape of the Capes from France. Do you plead guilty? Monsieur le Judge, there has been a misunderstanding. I had nothing to do with that. The evidence speaks against the accused. That is impossible. Okay, so everyone wants to see her hang. Uh, not hang, but beheaded. I don't want to behead everyone now. Could you describe the carriage you ordered from Jean-Louis? It was a luxurious berline, painted green and yellow. The Capes attempted to escape in a carriage that exactly matches the description. Where is the carriage now? I swear that I had nothing to do with the escape of Louis and his wife from the Tuileries. Answer the question. I, well, I lent it to count the frozen, but I swear on all that is sacred, I did not know the scoundrel's true intention. You think anyone will believe that? What did the accused think he was going to use it for? He said that it would be used by the Swedish ambassador. Why should I have disbelieved the count? Oh, so was she reused? Why would a lonely woman need a carriage for as many as six passengers? Because a lonely woman wants to travel with company, there are still some people I can invite. Or you could plan to help the royal family of exactly six people in their escape. I am not the only person in the city who owns a Berlin carriage for six people, Monsieur Le Judge. But the other owners are not plotting against the state. Perhaps not with the use of carriages. True, we're surrounded by serpents. I think I want to... I don't know. I don't know what I want. Why would the accused visit the Capes in the Tuileries? The visit was purely social. As an elderly person, I struggle with loneliness in Paris. That is most strange, considering that the accused severed relations with the royal court when the revolution began. I wish to see all the people I met in Versailles before I die. Is that so wrong? Was it during the visit that you handed Marie Antoinette your passport? Absolutely not. There was a guard who would not look away even for a second. Those terrible people never leave her sight, the poor anguished woman. And yet, by some miracle, your passport still found its way to her. I had nothing to do with it. How is it possible that the defendant's passport was being held by Marie Antoinette? It was stolen from my apartment. It must have been Count de Furzen. And, of course, you immediately reported the theft. I ordered my valet Gilbert to do that. How interesting that the Parisian police received no such claim. I do not know what to say. I have no idea why Gilbert did not follow my order. And the citizen did not see that it was done. I am a rather busy person. It must have slipped my mind. Those filthy aristocrats are really hardworking, aren't they? What does the accused think about the monarchy? I do not know much about politics, but I support the revolution, if that is what you are asking, Monsieur Le Judge. Is that why you left court? That is a completely different story and not related to politics at all. What was it related to? I faced some baseless accusations of a small scandal involving me and a married general. Did the defendant, despite those circumstances, maintain good relations with citizen Capet's wife, good enough to help her? I could only pray for her. At my age, one does not have enough strength for conspiracies. What is your relationship with Count de Furzen? Only friendship, Monsieur Le Judge. At my age, I cannot expect anything more, unfortunately. Was there something more in the past? Not as much as the people at court like to suppose. But you know each other well. You could say that, yes, I trusted him then, but now, because of him, I'm an elderly woman stuck in a prison cell. I'm a little bit torn. I don't know what to believe anymore. Because, I mean, it could be possible that she was just, I don't know, um, sweet-talked into giving this Count of Frozen everything that he wants, but... On the other hand, she just now claims that they are just friends and nothing romantical or anything happened between them. So why would she just do this? For, for why would she just do everything for him, like giving him his car, giving him her new carriage for the ambassador or whatever, and and ordering a new carriage, right? The valet of the Baroness Gilbert testified that the carriage was delivered to the count shortly before the escape. I don't know. 
I think she was somehow aware of everything. I mean, how could she not? Why would she have... I don't know. Just visiting everyone, visiting everyone before she dies is like a weak argument. That she just started visiting again right before they attempted to escape is a little bit suspicious. But I still don't want to hang her. I want to lock her up. That's what the jury wants, so... Yes, okay. I th I think I'm gonna sentence her to prison. I don't want to kill her. She I don't think that she's innocent. That's probably it. I think that she must have known something. So I think I'm gonna do... I think I'm gonna sentence her to prison. That's okay. So did the, did the defendant confess to the crime? Not really, no. According to the testimony, who was using the widow's vehicle? The Swedish ambassador. Where did the investigators find Andekov's passport with Marie Antoinette? I sentenced citizen Andekov to prison. Lead the condemned out. What? Isn't there no justice? Hey, I'm sending her to prison. How is that not justice? Really? Do, do you just want to see heads roll? I don't know. I even think that even with the king, with everything he did, I still I still think that it's not right to to cheer and be happy that he's getting beheaded. He's still a human being who did bad things, but still, I mean, everyone was like it, in those pictures, everyone looked so happy about it and laughing, and that's just not I don't know. That just made me want to put him in prison even more. I didn't But still, I'm being liked. So that was it. That was today's trial, so let's go home. Not you though, on the corf. Oh, is that the guy? Uh, yeah, that's it. Your wife told me that if I seek the support of just people, I should look for them in your house. Yes, citizen Orio, my husband will be more than happy to endorse your candidacy for the post of commander-in-chief. Why does this feel like a fate accompli? Please, do not be angry at your wife. I am sure that she acted in good faith when she made those promises. How could anyone refuse to support such a respectable officer? I am certain that my husband will acknowledge your merits just as I have. Undoubtedly, but how can I be so sure when there are so many other candidates? Well, I respect the other candidates, they are decent people. However, I can offer you the most precious gift, loyalty. Working together, we can greatly benefit each other, and maybe Paris too. Oh no, that sounds like a bad idea. Our family has a high regard for sincerity and loyalty, does it not, my dear? However, we respect each other's boundaries at every turn. Yes, those ugly rumors about you being an addict should be put to an end. Know that I never forget those who have done me a favor. Words, 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 citizen Orio. I am certain that no other candidate has asked for your endorsement. They do not think that you are worthy of their friendship, but I, François Henriot, am different, and so are my words. I am sure that my husband has already noticed that. Thank you. Regardless of what the masses are yelling, Paris is only as strong as its united elites. I will not retract my wife's promises, but in the future, make sure you come to me first. But of course. Oh, wife, what have you done? I think that this will bite us in the butt at one point. And I think I should do something with my father now. Oh, I just have to spend my evening with my grandfather. I'm sorry, children. I'm going to do something else with you tomorrow. So, here you go, father. He's just so hard to please.
The evening is warm, so you decide to take the long way home. Near the cafe Chantilly, you spot an amusing scene. Two drunkards fighting over a bottle of liquor, cursing like stable boys. The first is shorter and dressed in a disheveled officer's uniform, possibly a colonel. The second fighter, although significantly taller, is just an ordinary street thug. You listen to the gibberish and tangled epithet epithets, only to reach the conclusion that the bottle contains one last gulp of drink. So are we gonna try to settle the dispute or are we gonna ignore it? Let's just try to settle this. What? The two enemies unite in the face of a stranger in an elegant coat. It surely looks comical to the observers when, in a fit of booze-driven solidarity, one tries to hit you in the head with the disputed object, while the other kicks you at your ankle. You dodge the bottle, which smashes on a nearby wall, spilling the remaining alcohol everywhere. However, the kick is a success and immobilizes you long enough for the drunkards to disappear down a back alley. It takes some time for the bystanders to stop laughing. Are you kidding me? Really? I think I'm never gonna do something I'm just starting to hang everyone here. The city sucks. A Paris of a new era. Weak, vulnerable to attacks. Waiting for someone to reach for power. Waiting for someone who, once again, will take control of its soul. The pawns are now in play. Recent days have proven that Paris can win, that France can win. We managed to overcome our past, divesting our last remaining tyrant of his power. Now it is time to rebuild, to create symbols that inspire future generations. That is why during a gathering of the conventional, several enterprising citizens proposed the construction of a statue to commemorate the revolutionary victory over injustice. You were given the honor of supervising the construction. There is no better candidate than the one who vanquished Louis Capet. You have an opportunity to leave yet another mark on Paris. Ooh. Each section can be controlled by you, by an enemy, or by or be neutral. Each, se each section you take over provides you with one additional influence point. The chance of mission success is higher in your territory. Enemy agents can also take over your sections. Actions performed in enemy sections are less likely to be successful. Some sections are locked. Unlock them with any agent to carry out actions within them. To unlock a section, you have to scout it first. You can only unlock sections adjacent to ones that are already unlocked. Each section reacts to the situation in the game, causing the fervor of its residents to rise or fall. If the fervor becomes too intense, it could result in destructive riots. Send agents on missions, manage unruly crowds and fight for influence over the city. Click on an agent and choose the action you wish them to carry out. The bruiser is good at fighting, gaining reputation and managing unruly crowds. So the diplomat takes over sections, nurtures relations with factions and lowers fervor in sections, weaker in duels against enemy agents. You can move your agents freely between your sections. Unfortunately, in hostile or neutral sections, they can only move one space per day. Okay, so now this is like a map, it's like a playing board. So this is controlled by me, nothing else is. This is like, wait a second. Okay, so this is open to be unlocked. And this needs to be scouted. I don't have enough points to do that anyway, so... So do I have to? take this one on oh okay the more sections under your control the faster the monument is constructed each subsequent stage of completion allows you to take over another building near the monument so what statue are we gonna do I don't know, I think I don't want a statue of myself. That would be weird. That's strange. I think I like this one the most. 
That's good. I like the park one. That's a nice one. That looks like a nice statue. Let's build this. I don't want to build statues of myself. That's just strange. Also, this fits our sigil as well. Each building lets you perform a different kind of action. Take over the ones that support your playstyle. Spend more. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do any of those. Because I don't have enough points. But I think when I'm done, I want to spend more time with my family. That's it. Hmm. There is a lot happening. There is a lot of new mechanics added a to the game. Beginning. A violent prologue announced by a flowing red curtain. The wrath of strangers made me sick to my stomach. Feet stirred dark puddles. The air tasted like iron. Their heads, someone cried. Anger hidden in the shadows. Thousands of cries from a single throat. Here was a beast with hundreds of claws and teeth. A kicked, abused, and physically wounded soul. Their heads! What a cold and urgent order. The beast's eyes showed a long disguised bitterness. Yesterday's envy. It has waited too long to show mercy now. Too long covering its ears while others laughed at its inadequacies and feebleness. The beast's bark was filled with a thousand smiles of those who worship this bloody morning. The day when their enemies will perish. Their brothers. Hmm, I think we're gonna be in front of new problems as well again. So, I don't know, will the revolutionists just want everyone to hang now, or... I don't know. I don't know. So, what are you accused of, buddy? The defendant is Antoine Barnave, a 32-year-old politician and famous orator. Parisians remember him from his fiery speech defending the constitutional monarchy. He is known as a fierce enemy of the Republic and protector of the king. Seeing that his political efforts were fruitless, he joined the National Guard. In 1791, during the notorious flight to Varennes, the Capes were detained by the Guard. Antoine Barnave and two other soldiers were ordered to escort the fugitives back to Paris. When Barnav met Marie Antoinette, he was absolutely charmed. The two developed a potentially sexual relationship. Later, they were frequently writing to each other. In her letters, Marie Antoinette often expressed how for the survival of absolute monarchy. Hope for the survival of absolute monarchy. Not long after, Barnav joined the Jacobins, hoping to help the Capets and alleviate the radical approach of the revolutionaries toward citizen Capet and Marie Antoinette. His efforts, however, were futile. Due to his sympathy towards the monarchy and the Capets, especially Marie Antoinette, he was under constant surveillance. Now we have finally managed to collect enough evidence against him to file an indictment. One of the pieces of evidence is his correspondence with Marie Antoinette, which potentially proves his counter-revolutionary tendencies. Antoine Bernard ought to be punished like any other enemy, enemy of the revolution. Evidence letters Bernard wrote to Marie Antoinette. Oh, great. Um, what's this? Your Highness, I am certain that our shared efforts will convince the people of France to preserve the monarchy. The loss of your wisdom and kindness would be too tragic a blow for the state to afford. Yours, Antoine. Okay. So he's actually just an enthusiast. He did nothing, like, really wrong. He just... liked the queen? Oh wait, dude, he was escorting them. Wait, I just read I just need to read this one more time. I'm a little bit confused about the timeline here because I was always assuming that this incident in 1791 during the notorious flight to Varennes 
Oh no, not to the run. <sighs> I'm so confused about the timeline here. Because I thought that in 1791, that was when they caught the king and that was when we held the trial. So how could he wrote so many letters to Marie Antoinette when that wasn't so long ago? Is there any possibility to know which day it is today? I have no clue. Okay. Well, let's then just... So... The extenuating circumstances could be... So, the evidence is the letters. We can say that for sure. Um, Counter-revolution was also the letters, I guess. No, it's not. So, the famous orator is probably the, the offender's personality. Probably also his courting? No. Could that be part of his personality too? I don't see how this is a motive. Also, I don't see... I need to read this again. So, because... I don't know. As far as I see it... And I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But as far as I see it, he did nothing. He did nothing wrong. Like, there, he, he took no actions or anything. He, I mean, his in his opinion, the monarchy was good and all. But then he... Is he works at the guard and then probably in pure coincidence he is ordered to escort them he is ordered to escort the royal family back and then falls in love with Marie Antoinette and then writes to her that probably also because he doesn't want her to die or whatever. But so as I see it right now, he did nothing ever against revolutionists or anything. It's just I don't know. To be honest, I think he did nothing wrong. So, could ch could being charmed by the queen be an extenuating circumstance? Or it would it's a motive. It's a motive, I guess. No, it's not. Really? Am I going to suck at this? Okay, then I think it's got to be charm it's got to be extenuating circumstance. Because, I don't know, being charmed by someone doesn't belong to your personality, right? This is really complicated. Probably a sympathy towards the monarchs is his personality, though. Really? Also not? Okay, I think I'm, this will be the first time that I won't unlock any questions. Oh, wait a sec. So, okay, we gotta, we gotta think this through now really carefully. So, sympathy towards the monarchs, then... You know, I don't really even see what his motives are. Because sympathy towards the monarchs could both be counter-revolution, or it could also be a motive. It's definitely not an extenuating circumstance. I think I'm gonna go with counter-revolution. And if we die, we die. Oh! Who? Okay. Who is Marie Antoinette? Where does Marie Antoinette belong to in this? I don't really see how this could be his personality, but she's she's a motive. Because she likes her. Yes. Okay. So escorting Citizen Capet is... Is it his personality or is it a circumstance? Is it an extenuating circumstance because he did his job? His letters addressed to Marie Antoinette are definitely not an extenuating circumstance, so it must belong to his personality. But haven't I done it? Okay. Charmed by the Queen? Yes. Okay, so there's nothing left. Oh, we did it! We managed! Okay, so escorting them was really an extenuating circumstance. Whew, that was close. He fell in love with Marie Antoinette? Are you Mr. Antoine Barnave? I am. Did you and your mistress, Marie Antoinette, plot against France? There are so many lies in your question that I cannot decide which one to deny first. Okay, buddy, if you're starting this way, then I... I wanted to believe you. He tries to defend himself with pretty words. So you're not pleading guilty? Of course not. I don't even know what he's pleading guilty for. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> 
Maybe I'm just stupid. It's also a possibility. Why did the guard choose you to escort the Capes? Within the guard, one does not question orders. They ordered me to carry out a task, and that is what I did. Okay, so you did not ask for it. How could I have? I only learned about Citizen Capes' escape when they gave me the order. Yet you profited from it, did you not? Considering where I am standing, I do not really think so. <laughs> kind of true. <laughs> I like this guy. Um, so, you you escorted the fugitive royals back to Paris. Did you see an opportunity to use your new friends for your personal gain? Absolutely not. I saw hounded, terrified people and I decided to plead for them. Where were you when we were, hun when we were hounded by them? Maybe you were driven by your desire for Marie Antoinette. The circumstances were not very romantic, but who knows? That is an unnecessary and false insinuation that has nothing to do with the case. I wonder if Capé liked to watch them. Ugh! I don't want to know that. It would appear that in your letters to Marie Antoinette you tried to convince her and her husband to support the revolution. What would you gain from that? I believe that we would avert the terror we are currently facing. Why do you think there is terror in our country? I will not be standing here now otherwise. You're there because you're a royalist swine. The Capes were not interested in the constitution. Unfortunately not. And how would you benefit from it? I only wanted that was bad. I only wanted what was best for my country. So he he wanted to change their minds, right? Okay, so he actually tried to make peace between them. I forgot about that. Why did Marie Antoinette make such an impression on you when we first met her? She's an incredibly well-mannered and sophisticated woman. I would have been blind not to see it. He fell for her like a youngster. Really? Marie Antoinette is a married woman and I am a decent man. You can come to your own conclusions. I heard rumors that she did not really care for her wedding ring. And you are aware that rumors are not the best source of knowledge? I don't really see where this is going. Because, <laughs> no, I'm afraid that I have to make another decision against the jury. Were you not afraid to openly support the monarchs on the eve of the revolution? That could be interpreted as treason. I may be young and idealistic, but I am no traitor. If that were true, you would be standing on the right side. I love this country and I am certain that the republic which the revolutionaries are fighting for is not a panacea. If you fight the republic, you fight France itself. No, I really don't... I, I don't know. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I'm stupid again, but to me... It doesn't sound like he did so much wrong. I, I don't want to lock him up for it. I don't know. He never he never laid a hand on anyone. He never did. He actually wanted just to advocate between the revolutionaries and the king's family and the king. So he did nothing wrong. He never had anything. He never abused his power. You know what? They don't want to set him free anyway, so I'm just gonna ask him... Oh no, although maybe that's not a good idea. As long ago you were on a path to Grand Korea, I remember your famous speech. Wait, what was this speech about? Parisians remember him from his fiery speech defending the constitutional monarchy. He is known as a fierce enemy of the Republic and protector of the king. Seeing that's a put Okay. So yeah, he was at first an orator, but then he didn't have any success, so he joined the National Guard. I think I'm gonna set him free. Sorry, jury. You hate me anyway, so it doesn't really matter. If I set him free, I get a reputation bonus. I can't see what he would have done, what, what he's done wrong. Like, so wrong that I would put him into prison, so... He's innocent, I say. Da -da 
defendant confessed to the crime. I don't even know what crime. <laughs> Wait, that's it. Was this act counter revolutionary in nature? That's a complicated question. Actually, I don't think so. With what virtues did the queen charm the defendant? Oh, wait. I think I need to read this again. Well-mannered and sophisticated. Her culture and class would be the right thing then, I guess. How did the defendant learn about the escape of Citizen Capay? From an order he didn't know before. Did the defendant confess to the crime? No, he didn't. Because I really don't know what his crime should be. So I'm just gonna say no. Was his act counter-revolutionary in nature? I suppose it was because he's not a fan of the... So let's just go with yes. And let's get this over with. It's... He can leave anyway. I have no further questions. Thank you. I find no guilt in Antoine Bernard's behavior. Everyone has the right to their own political views in the Republic. Thank you. Do you serve the revolution or not? That judge will soon lose his seat. Absurd. What's he even doing here? I'm doing my work. What are you doing here? Don't you have any work to do? Or are you just spending your days sitting in courtrooms listening? Go get a job. And does it matter what we have to say? You'd better take us into account in the future. Yeah, but you're saying crazy stuff sometimes. Oh, I was correct. Yes. Okay, I lost some reputation though. <sighs> I'm sorry, jury, but seriously. Sometimes you do strange stuff. My name is Jean-Marie Roland. My name sh not, should not be unknown to you. After all, you wiped your shoes on it during King Louis' trial. I don't remember what he did exactly. Citizen Capet, not King. King Louis Auguste Bourbon, Duc de Berry, thanks to you, flinging around half-truths and speculation, everyone is calling for my head, accusing me of corruption and treason, while you used your back as a while you used our backs as a stepladder on your way up the social social hierarchy. Did I do something bad to him? I don't remember that. But if you're gonna act that way, maybe I will take your head. Corrupting politicians does not always work out. Danton does it, Mulville try to, but they caught you. Happens. I will probably be dismissed from my station. I may even end up at the guillotine, but I will make sure your head rolls right after mine. You will be my comrade in misery. What have I done? Threatening a judge of the tribunal is an even worse idea than supporting a despised king and corrupting politicians of the convention. True. I will get rid of your candidate for captain of the guard, then I will go after you. Oh, go ahead and try. It took me and my wife too long to get to where we are. I will not die because of some overboost maggot that likes to call himself a judge. I might be overboost, but I am a judge. I will not only call myself that. You will see how we wage war in Paris' salons, you treacherous mongrel. Of course. Well. Oh, it's a family dinner. Dear comrade, I heard the news of Minister Roland's unexpected visit. I have to confess that Roland knows about me about, knows about me something that he should not have. I am certain he is already weaving an intrigue against us. We have to start working on one against him, Francois Henriot. I knew it! I knew it was a bad idea. Wife, what have you brought us into? I thought you loved me. This is what I get for spending so much time with you? Play something for me, son. I have work to do. As you wish, father. Okay, what are we gonna do together now? Support the construction of the statue. Oh, no one likes that. <laughs> no one likes that either. Evening with grandfather. Reading together. Viola concerto. Huh, demonstration. No. I think I'm gonna go with reading together. 
I'm sorry, older son. But I think I should focus more on my on my little my sm little son because he influences my family better. So maybe maybe I should start doing more with my younger son. Also, I should. Uh, well, reading was not that effective. Huh? Oh well. It's hard to juggle this family stuff. So, is this my. What? Who are you? Enemy agents will fight with your agents for territory. They can take over your sections or neutral sections. When at least two hostile agents meet in one section, combat ensues. Remember that a diplomat has little chance against a brutal fighter. After defeating combat, your agent becomes injured. They can still move around, but are not able to perform any actions. Your main section is vital. The buildings here enable you to influence the rest of the game. Protect it at all costs. If you let it out of your grasp, you will lose the game. Okay, buddy. I still I need more influence points. I think I'm struggling a bit with that. Yeah, you just do that. The documents discovered in Capet's iron cabinet raised suspicions regarding Roland. The minister hates the tribunal for openly ridiculing him and he will not forgive you for it. His intelligent wife holds an even stronger grudge. Okay, what's going to happen now? A number of successes required to win two, a number of successes required for a bonus four. Okay, what's gonna happen next? Perform actions correctly to fill the progress bar. If you carry out too few, you will lose. If you perform more than necessary, you will receive a bonus. Perform actions correctly to fill the progress bar. If you carry out too few, you will lose. If you perform more than necessary, you will receive a bonus. Okay, but what do I do? Convincing a witness. Let's do that. So far there are only rumors that Roland destroyed the documents. If we find someone from his social circle to corroborate this, we would gain a powerful tool. We have a potential candidate. Philippe Coté was among the people who opened Capet's iron cabinet. Well then, let's go. For an action to be successful, you need to persuade the required number of people. You can also send your diplomat to do it for you. Remember, you can only do this while the block is active. Well, I can't send my diplomat. <laughs> There's not really much I can do right now. Thank you for coming, Citizen Cote. How could I say no to a person who holds the lives of kings in the palm of his hand? I presume that our meeting is connected to Minister Roland? Exactly. I would like to talk about the incident with the Iron Cabinet. It is indeed rather ugly. The minister could lose his head because of it, although it is currently nothing more than gossip. Yes, but what if the gossip suddenly turned into the truth? Then things would certainly get nasty. Okay, so now we're gonna take another speech. Okay, he's both withdrawn. Maybe we can start by manipulating him. I don't understand, what will he get out of this? What does this mean? What will Cote get out of this? Or what will Roland get out of this? Because Roland will probably get prison out of this. Or a beheading. I think if we approach this like aggressively, he doesn't want to help us. We don't know how loyal he is to Roland himself, so... Maybe humility? What will he get out of this? I don't know, let's just go with... It's carrot and stick, I don't understand. I don't know, this could be like a joke, it could be careless or whatever, but what about... Aggression, maybe? Let's end with aggression. Oh, those are all good choices! Yes! Nice. Strong argument, strong argument, a strong argument. Yes, let's go. 
You and I, we are France's servants. It is our responsibility to make sure Roland falls, so we need to make the truth known. Did we not take an oath to defend our ideals? Roland has his vices, but are they enough to justify my betrayal? Because that is what you ask of me. Minister Roland will not save you when matters become troublesome. I can save you from charges of complicity, for example. Minister Roland's days are numbered. We only need a witness to those events and you, citizen, shall reveal his crimes. Otherwise, you will be decapitated with him. Oh, I didn't want to do it that way. Well, I must say that your words are not very convincing. I will help, but remember that I know na and now know more about your plans. Oh, great. Oh, well... It was a questionable success. So apparently, half good answer, uh, full of ha a speech full of half good answers uh, won't help a lot. So, hmm. okay. I think I convinced him a bit at least. So, spreading rumors. Methods of solution. Some actions require you to make decisions about tactics. Each decision may have a different chance of success. Choose how to resolve this. When Roland recognized the contents of the Iron Cabinet, he allegedly asked for a moment of privacy and was left alone with the evidence. In light of Citizen Capet being accused of conspiracy and the lack of evidence, we could try accusing the minister of destroying it. Cote confirming these sensational details would surely help. So there's a 10% chance of success. A few casual remarks made by the respected Jacques-Louis David should unleash an avalanche. Court guard Raphael Clovis, your loyal subordinate, will have to talk some sense into a few heads so they realize how big a threat Roland is. Now I think I want to go with diplomacy. Let's just spread some rumors. Intrigues are carried out in a matter of days. The results of some action blocks may only, may only be seen in the next day. That is interesting because this is like now we're not just a judge anymore. We are so kind of we start to be a political figure as well. So I think that's it for today. Let's go. This is complicated. This is going to be complicated, I guess. So, anyway, but we are going to tackle our next trial of day 9 in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>